There you go. Recording started. Okay, so um, I probably should start with a few quick introductions. Hi, I'm Yan Kei. I'm a project manager at the Open Bioeconomy Lab, and I'm also one of the uh, recon coordinators. Uh, I'm going to pass you quickly on to my two co-hosts, uh, Sibeli and Yuzi, to make a quick introduction of themselves. Uh, Hi, everyone. Uh, so yes, my name is Sibeli. I'm from Brazil. I am a coordinator at IGEM Community, and I'm also part of the new Reclone coordination team. Uh, it's great having you with us today. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Yuzi. Uh, I'm from Imperial College and I'm one of the committee member of uh, Reclaim Community. Great, thanks guys. Uh, so both Sibeli, Yuzi and I will be facilitating and hosting uh, this meeting today. Uh, we'll be in the chat. It's nice to see that a lot of you have also posted uh, who you are and where you're coming from. So I'll be sure to look at that in a, in a shortly. Um, and our team is also led by Jenny, who most of you know, uh, and she hopefully will be presenting later on today as well. Uh, she's actually currently in transit from Chile to Argentina. So we're hoping she can uh, join us before the end of this meeting. Um, so I think without further ado, I'm just gonna hand you over to Sibeli who will introduce the first speaker of, uh, um, today for us. Thank you. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for joining us today to hear some uh, updates on research and DNA diagnostics. And well, our first speaker is Maira, and she's currently a, a post uh, on her second postdoc at McGill University in Montreal, Canada, where she's working on ribose switches and ribose switches biophysics. She used to work at Cesar's lab uh, at Pontificia Universidad Católica uh, de Chile and uh, also as a, post a postdoc, and she's a specialist in protein biophysics. She was deeply involved in the research and diagnostics, collect diagnostics collection. She was involved in the making of homebrew reagents uh, for low-cost RT lamp and SARS-CoV-2 de detection, and optimizing of recombinant and recomb for the recombinant expression of polymerase and DNA polymerase. And before that, she studied biochemistry at University Andres Bello and was a PhD at University of Chile. Although she's no longer working uh, with Cesar and Fernand, that you all might know them, uh, she's kindly agreed to come along and tell us a bit about the work she did there. And without further ado, uh, the floor is yours, Maira. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm now gonna share my screen. <laughs> So, can you see the, the slides very well, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I, I'm gonna present to you some of the results that we as a team were collecting. Um, and I decided to entitle this presentation, 3D Enzymes, uh, Open Protocols and low cost Productions of Polymerases and Retrotranscriptases. We work together with Cesar and Fernand's lab so uh, uh, now I'm gonna give you some context. So for, uh, gonna, okay. So it's not a surprise that COVID-19 pandemics changed our world. Uh, to, start, to start, it, it biggers the socioeconomic gap, giving more than 100 million people in extreme poverty in 2020. So that's a very um, uh, economic and, um, social crisis that we are facing now. And, um, but also it has some positive aspects that in, we had to enrich our virtual communication and that allows us to collaborate with people from all over the world, like just through uh, screens and that was great. And also uh, we, uh, it was a high demand for um, open science and open data because we need to know and understand everything about these new viruses, SARS-CoV-2, and then also increase the demand for health tools like testing and vaccines. However, like all these needs and costs were translated not only in that, also we needed nurses, doctors in charge of uh, the treatment of the people, sequencing the virus that was crucial for us to develop kits. And that was great that in between the 
first days that the pandemic was declared in January of 2020, we had the virus sequenced. And then from there, we started to develop like primers to sequence like for detection of this um, virus. But for that also we need scientists and medical doctors with knowledge in molecular biology and then that can do this kind of RT-PCRs, for example, and then keep going the research and develop of new technologies and new uh, anti-vaccines, right? But then how can we help from our expertise? So in the Cesar, in Cesar Ramirez Sarmiento lab, we, are, um, we have a really good team in charge of the study of biophysics of proteins and enzymes uh, in the computational and experimental level. So in, in, the, in that lab, they work with um, PET hydrolases and metamorphic proteins. So then we were thinking that the crucial reagents for these detection kits are polymerases and retrotranscriptases. And then we, we decided, so maybe we can purify them in easy ways and in easy to reproduce protocols. So we identified five enzymes that we wanted to uh, start to purify. And those were uh, TAC, PFU, and BSTLF uh, polymerases. And the retrotranscriptases were uh, MMLV and HIV-1 uh, retrotranscriptase. So a general protocol for protein purification in this case, uh, for some of the, the first enzymes that we tried, we use commercially available um, vectors, uh, plasmids. So the, the general sequence for them are they have a T7 promoter. They have this lac I, which is a, a, an inhibitor of this op uh, lac operon. And then downstream, we will have our gene of interest and well, some antibiotic resistant and origin of re replication. So these plasmids with our enzymes downstream to the, P, uh, the T7 promoter are transforming an E. coli um, strain and then they can be grown in um, rich media such as LB, for example. And then they were growth in bigger flasks uh, and induce the expression of these uh, downstream genes by um, IPTG. And then in, in this, like this is, was the general uh, um, protein uh, induction and purification. So they were allowed to overexpress like overnight at 18 degrees Celsius. Then the, the cells were recovered by centrifugation and then were lysate um, and then Again, centrifugation uh, to recover the supernatant where our soluble proteins were. And then nickel NTA purification because our, our proteins has a his tag, then we can do like this affinity purification. And then for, sol for some of them, we had an extra step of a heparin column, which these columns allows to the binding, the, the repurification of DNA binding proteins. And also for some of the um, um, the uh, of our um, enzymes that were not used uh, with heparin columns, we did a buffer exchange. And then those purified fractions were run into an SDAs page. So these are gels for those proteins. So the MMLV, uh, tag DNA polymerase, and the PFU, we needed to do the heparin uh, purification step. So these are the... In PR is the pellet of the, of the cell lysate, the clarified lysate, the flow through from the nickel NTA column and the washes, and then the elutions with, with imidazole. And then for, from these, we did uh, pools, and then we, we, we go to the heparin columns. So as you can see, for, with the heparin column, we increase a lot the purity of these enzymes. And with this, we didn't need to do HPLC, for example, for uh, separating or purifying them again by size exclusion chromatography. So these enzymes were used as, as they are. And also uh, BSTLF wasn't necessary to do a heparin column. It was used just like that, just the nickel NTA and they buffer exchange during using centrifugation. So after we had this, um, purification uh, protocols. We did some experimental validation of some of the protein that was made by Ariel Cerda and Grace Armijo. 
And for example, this is a two-step RT-PCR, and they were testing MMLV, retrotranscriptase, and the PFU polymerase. And as you can see, um, they use different buffers and different reducing agents, DTT and beta mercaptoethanol, ethanol. And they saw that the enzymes were working really good. And also they did this test with just one step RT-PCR using MMLV plus DAC and uh, MMLV plus PFU. And uh, <clears throat> what they saw, again, uh, the, the reaction was really efficient, really good. The NTC are, are the non-template um, control and the minus RTS without the retrotranscriptase. And then after they did this like conventional um, RT-PCR, they went for QRT-PCR uh, using for detection now <clears throat> the, the detection of the N gene for the SARS-CoV-2. And these are in, in this plot. We have here the, um, the, the, the number of the cycle and the relative normalization of the pro uh, signal. And using uh, serial dilutions for uh, synthesized RNA, they were uh, able to uh, uh, quantify, no, um, to detect these RNAs using this system with the lab-made enzymes. So this was really great because this validated our all our efforts on purifying them very easily. But then, <clears throat> so here is the um, SARS-CoV-2 structure. This is the genome, and this is where the N gene is, which is for the nucleocapsid for this virus. But then uh, also Tamara and Isaac were working on develop, um, trying to improve now another de de detection method, which was using the LAMP method. So LAMP method is really cool because it's based on um, using this just, uh, it's like a PCR, but in uh, isothermal conditions. So the idea is that you have these um, primers that are gonna allow you to create these kind of loops. So you have your target sequence here and you use at least two forward primers and two reverse primers. And then upon amplifications, you will have these, you will be creating these kind of loops, which have many uh, like primers binding sites. And then you will have a lot, a ton of DNA production and the, the, the great thing about this is that you can do it like at just one temperature, for example, using BSTLF, which is a, a polymerase that works at 65 degrees Celsius. So they were studying, were using these, for, uh, for instance, this BSTLF and the MMLV that we produce in our lab, and then validating uh, SARS-CoV-2 detection using this method. So first, again, they have here, they use um, like RT, uh, RT lamp using uh, uh, evergreen as a probe. So here you have the um, normalized response for that probe and then time, time for seeing this increasing in the, in the probe fluorescence. So what they saw is that the, the production, the, the sensitivity of our enzymes were very comparable with the ones that are commercially available. Here, the BSC 2.0 and plus uh, RTX are the commercially available uh, kits for doing RT lamp. So very happy again, the NTC weren't amplifying. So they were, they went there to amplify, to test like clinical samples. And this is what I'm showing you here. So they had in, in this axis, you will have the RT lamp uh, time for detection, for uh, crossing the, the threshold for, um, uh, for this line. And then here, well, uh, um, so the RT-PCR CT value. So low, high, negative and positive controls. So they saw that, that when they have that when they have really low CT values for some uh, samples, they will have always positive with RT lamp. But however, there there were some like false positive for the homemade reaction, but were just one, and the positive controls were positive as well. So overall, it's a it's a 
homemade detection kit that works really well. Probably we have to work more with more samples to really have the statistics about this. But at least now it's it's working uh, really good. But these were these all these results were obtained with the commercially available vectors. So we wanted also to design and use open vectors. So the idea was to design an open vector and then use as a uh, downstream genes a, a reporter, which is a uh, few GFP, and then use that if if that works, use it to express BSCLF and HIV one uh, retrotranscriptase, and then do the same purification steps that I showed you before. So again, Isaac, Tamara, and Daniel were working on the development of this uh, plasmid which is really nice. They have here the lag I, which is the inhibitor for the lag operator. They have the uh, uh, T7 promoter, and then they have this um, plasmid that was working really good. So we tried, okay, let's see if we have the production of GFP. And in here we use E. coli, uh, BL21, D3, <clears throat> to see the expression of GFP. The cool thing about GFP is that if you have the samples and you don't uh, heat up the samples while you are the loading dye, you can clearly see it under UV. So uh, here I show you in this gel, we have two hours and overnight inductions with or without IPTG. So we have some like small leak of expression, which is can also be seen with other pet uh, vectors, but we have a really good amount of expression in overnight inductions. So from that, um, Javier Aviles and Javier Reyes were working on in this part of the project, well, with me as well. And um, Javier Aviles was purifying this enzyme and as you can see, very beautiful green fluorophore, uh, green fluorescence. So, okay, this was working. And then Javier started to work now in the expression and purification of the enzymes. So she purified, BSTLF and HIV-1 RT, which were really good purifications. And the cool idea, the, the cool thing about these uh, enzymes is that you can't, not using only for COVID detection, but also another student in our lab, in Fernand's lab, Felipe Navarro, was working on uh, testing other viruses that are not COVID. So in this case, he was working on developing these lamp reactions for detecting uh, the potato virus Y, which affects <clears throat> the potato and um, is threatening the certification of the seeds and then affecting economically the ag agriculture of potato. And uh, so he developed this system. When you will have, um, so he compared the, uh, he used a colorimetric, colorimetric RT lamp using the open vectors purified uh, enzymes and using the commercially uh, the, the commercial vector for these enzymes. And they he obtained the same results. So in here you use, uh, you can use a, 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 a pH indicator to see the, 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 the amplification because you are releasing pyrophosphate and then the pH of the reaction is going to decrease. And then with that, you can colorimetrically see if the reaction is amplifying the sequence, the target sequence that you are wishing for. So all our protocols for purifications are available in um, protocols at EO. And soon it's gonna be available the protocol for HIV 1RT. And um, also for the RT lamp, there are protocols available under Tamara Matute's name. So you can go and look up for her to, uh, to see her protocols. And Finally, I will go to the acknowledgements. So here is the laboratory for Cesar Ramirez Sarmiento, and especially thanks for Javier Reyes and Paula Blasquez, and for our collaborator, Fernand Federici. The special thanks are for Javier Aviles, Ariel Cerda, Isaac Nunez, Daniel Nunez, Aníbal Arce y Tamara Matute, que I, uh, I forgot to put it there. So yeah, that was all. So if you have any questions. 
Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and yes, we actually have uh, some questions on the chat. Okay. Uh, so first we have a question from Guy. I don't know, Guy, if you want to ask the question directly or prefer that I read it. You can read it, it's fine. Great. Uh, so the question we had is, did you hit, uh, did you do a heat inactivation or the nurturing step for any of the proteins? Um, for the assays? No, for, for the enzymes. And stuff. So because they're stable at 65, if you do a step of heating everything to 60 or 65, it denatures 90% of the other proteins and that can help you clean it yes. up a lot. Did you do that? Did yes. You Yes, so the details, you can see them in, in protocol.io, but all for all thermal stable proteins, we use uh, an extra step of uh, heating. So we have it here. So after ly uh, lysating, we did a heat shock at 65 degrees Celsius for the ones that are thermostable. Yeah, we did that. And that increased a lot the purification of the, the purity of the samples. Great, thank you. Uh, and now we have a question from Aaron. Mm -hmm. um, I'll read it here and maybe if he has follow-ups. So Team Philippines here, so far uh, they have expressed and purified three proteins from recon. For ML MMLV, uh, they have been experiencing its partitionating to the insoluble fraction. Uh, did you experience the same? And if not, do you have any tips to improve the solubility? Hmm. I don't remember experiencing experiencing that. Uh, we have really good purification for MMLV, um, but all our like details and steps are available in the platform. So we did a lot of changing like the the, the lysis to washing buffers. So we did a lot of uh, implementing improvement in those buffers. So maybe you can go there and see if. We have the same protocol. If not, for sure, feel free to contact me and I can direct you to the Cesar's lab, to the person that is currently working on that, which is Javier Aviles. And then you can discuss with her about your protocol. We are happy to give feedback about all the purification. So please, uh, my email is in there. So if you want to contact me and I can deliver you with Cesar's and Javier. Uh Perfect. And I think we have Jenny joining us for the presentation soon. And then before that, we also have a question from Harry. Uh, was there any comparative analysis of the RT lamp COVID 19 assay with RT key PCR assay using homebrew enzyme and the commercial enzyme? In, in, so for this part over here, I, I think, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, so yeah, they they did a lot of comparisons within the um, the, the commercially available and the the uh, the, the homemade enzymes, and this is a manuscript that is under review now. So soon it's gonna be free, but it, yeah, the, so they are very comparable, the commercially available and the 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 homemade enzymes. Yeah, they did some here, Ariel and Grace. They did. Um, a lot of controls in there and we have very comparable results they have perfect um i don't see any more questions but if anyone has any questions we will also have a moment after the next presentation where you can ask thanks again Maria, for the presentation great work uh you did and it's great to see your journey also uh, and now I'll pass again to Yanke and see if Jenny will be able to give her presentation. <laughs> Great, thanks again, Myra. Um, so now we move on to our second speaker and it was uh, good to see that Jenny has managed to turn up. Um, so I, I imagine most of you already know Jenny, but I'll give her a quick introduction. So Jenny is a senior research associate at Shuttleworth Foundation Research Fellow at the University of Cambridge. Uh, she leads the Open Bioeconomy Lab within the uh, Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology at the university here. Um, you'll probably recognize a lot of the work that she's done um, 
with the Open Plants and Fetid Biology Research Center, with the Global Open Science Hardware community as well. Um, and today she'll give us a bit more of an update on the Diagnostics DNA collection. So without much further ado, I'll pass you on to Jenny. Great, thanks Yanke. I'm gonna be off video because I'm in Mendoza Airport. And so um, <laughs> it's just easier on the bandwidth if I'm audio only, uh, but I will put my um, presentation on in just two seconds. Uh, I just need to join on my computer. Um, but while I'm doing that, I, I can just say thank you for everyone for coming. I can see some familiar names on the chat, so welcome. Um, I'm actually here in Argentina because we are working with uh, the Latin American reclone nodes to um, try and set up a hub here, which, so we're, we're kind of meeting um, people from Peru and Brazil and Chile, Argentina, I think also Colombia. Um, we're doing a training course on enzyme production for two days and we'll be thinking about kind of how to take the next steps here in Latin America. So it's very exciting, but it does mean that we will be missing several key participants from Latin America because they're either in taxis heading to the hotel <laughs> or otherwise in some kind of transit right now. Um, so yeah, our timing was probably not impeccable for this, but we thought it would be useful to and good to fit in a meeting um, before Christmas. And we'll definitely be updating on all the stuff that happens here in Argentina on the reclone forum. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, so the, the goal of this presentation is really just to recap. I mean, I know many of you are very familiar with <clears throat> the collection of DNA that was put together by uh, multiple collaborators, including my lab, Fernand Federici's lab in Chile, um, and, and uh, collaborators at Inco Bioworks as well, um, that could support the manufacturing of um, enzymes specifically for molecular diagnostics, as well as some controls for um, SARS-CoV-2 in this case. Um, so I'm just gonna present a little bit on the toolkit. And also I think you've already had um, an introduction to reclone and the opportunities that are there, but uh, I'll probably just reinforce that <laughs> in terms of getting involved and sharing uh, protocols and other useful things with the community. Um, so I'm just gonna open the presentation, hopefully in two seconds. Um, it's just taking its time. So you're going to see me appear again, um, hopefully now. And fingers crossed it doesn't. Yeah, I'm so someone will let me in. Great, thank you. Um, but I just say that part of this recap is to say that we have, um, you know, a great opportunity to actually refresh the collection um, as we've been working on it for a while, there's probably things that we haven't covered like molecular biology techniques um, for molecular diagnostics that are not included. So I just want to ask everybody uh, while the presentation is ongoing to have a think about other enzymes, and other DNA parts that you would particularly like to see um, it, yeah, represented in the group. We have like, we're between the reclaim collection is 20 enzymes and the broader open enzyme collection is 60. So we already have quite a few. Um, options, but you know, there's always more that we can add. So um, I'm going to share my screen now and hopefully this works. Let me know if you can see it. Is that there? It might take a second. I think it's loading. Yeah, are we good? Yep, we can see this now. Thanks, Jenny. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. And yeah, apologies also if there's any background noise, because as mentioned, I am. <laughs> so, um, all right, so this is just a, a map of the world that shows export of laboratory reagents. Just as a reminder of kind of part of the reason that reclone exists was to address this problem, that there is a broken supply chain for reagents. Um, many parts of the world have much better and quicker access to the tools that we need to do science, uh, particularly molecular biology, compared to other parts of the world. And so export is not a direct and ideal proxy for manufacturing, but it's fairly close. And so it's clear that there are areas of the world where reagents are being manufactured and areas of the world where they're not. And so part of the goal of Reclone was to really make the manufacturing and distribution of reagents more equitable, um, but also to kind of form a community in which people working on either reagent production or the application of those reagents to useful molecular biology techniques could get together, um, share ideas, share work in progress, get some advice and support 
um, and also critically share tools, so DNA parts, share protocols, and other knowledge resources. Um, so this is the problem effectively that we're trying to address because the knock-on impact of this is slow delivery of reagents. Um, it slows down our research and also innovation. And we saw this, of course, a lot during um, the COVID pandemic where you know, it wasn't possible to work as quickly in certain parts of the world as others um, because of this supply chain disruption, which in COVID was global. So it really kind of shone a spotlight on something that many of us had, be, had known about um, and been interested in solving for quite some time. And so the idea of the, the reclone collection was to spread the means to manufacture those enzymes in a more decentralized or even distributed way. And they, this would hopefully increase autonomy through uh, redundancy in the supply chain. So not relying on just a certain number of countries to produce and ship enzymes to everybody that needs them or other reagents, but to have a much more kind of network uh, distribution effect. And so most of what we've covered in the collection is the enzyme production piece. So, um, you know, I think this is familiar to everybody probably on the call, but we obviously identify proteins, clone them into plasmids, transform into bacteria, undertake the protein expression, and then extraction purification. Um, and so when we were putting together the open enzyme collection, we kind of covered a lot of these areas um, in terms of providing promoters, affinity tags, a whole range of reporters, um, also some cleavage and kind of solubility tags as well. Um, the coding sequences for more than 60 enzymes and terminators. So all of the things that you need to go through that cycle of protein production and purification. Um, and this is distributed under OpenMTA. So it's also available for companies to use and sell for commercial purposes, because not all of us want to make enzymes in our lab. We would probably much rather someone else made them, but we could buy them at an affordable price um, with rapid delivery and good quality. And so that was the intention behind the collection itself. Um, and then a number of us came together, oh, little box has gone in the wrong place. A number of us came together um, during the pandemic to put together a kind of boutique collection um, that focused on uh, in vitro diagnostics. Um, and we put around six promoters, eight affinity tags, two reporters, four cleavage sites, three terminators, and 20 coding sequences. Um, and they're all provided um, in accordance with this syntax at the bottom here. So this is just a way of ensuring that when you assemble your DNA, um, everything kind of fits together in the right uh, order, the right configuration. Um, and so all promoters will have the A and B um, assembly sites. And then if you don't want to put in a certain thing, like perhaps you only want to put one tag in and not tag two and three, we have linker, um, linker parts that will just span this area here and enable you to set it out together your entire expression cassette. Um, we also included in the collection ready to go expression cassettes for quite a number of the most common coding sequences, which cover quite a lot of DNA polymerases, reverse transcriptases, um, another uh, RNA polymerase, and quite a few of the uh, enzymes that are involved in RPA, for example. Um, but we realized that not everybody will want to assemble the DNA. And so we attempted to provide ready to go plasmids for expression. Attempt being the operative word because it turned out that the backbone that we put them in was very ineffective for, um, for protein expression, unfortunately. So uh, Fernand's team in came uh, in Chile, have been working very hard to find a better backbone. And Felipe and Open Bioeconomy Lab in Cambridge has been recloning everything <laughs> into the new that update the collection uh, on add gene and bio free genes with that new better expression once we've validated it and everything looks like it's working well. Um, so this is the this is the collection we produced and it's been used in a number of research collaborations already. We've already heard about some fantastic work that's happening uh, in Chile and um, in Chile and Peru, there's a joint project too on LAMP and RPA. Um, we got used by some finalists in the X Prize, and we're also using the collection as part of a, a bio engine, which is a synthetic biology and diagnostics course um, that was funded by a UK Africa grant. So it's, it's out there in the world. I hope many of you have got it in your labs, and if you haven't, um, definitely reach out. And unfortunately right now, it's not available for free from free genes. So free genes were sending stuff out literally free, even the shipping was free. 
Um, unfortunately, that's not happening right now because they don't have a technician in the lab currently. Um, but you can get most of the collection from Adgene. And if you um, would just like it, then definitely get in touch with myself or um, if you're in Latin America, with Fernand Federici or basically anyone who's listed on the Reclone website as a Reclone ambassador, because they should have a copy of the toolkit that they can help you access. Um, so that's the Reclone collection and was kind of like a key um, component of what we wanted to share. Um, and this combined with the other collections provides a sandbox of nearly 200 interchangeable elements that you can put in any combination. And of course, also swap in other things that you'd like to see. And if there's something super useful that is missing, we'd really love to know because um, we can work to get that also synthesized and added to the collection. And one of the reasons to synthesize it rather than just PCRing it out of an existing vector is that then we uh, remove any issues with material transfer agreements. So these are contracts that are sent often alongside plasmids and often mean that you cannot redistribute them to other labs and you're not supposed to use them for commercial use. But um, if you de novo synthesize the DNA, it kind of erases <laughs> any open MTA which highlights how ridiculous this actual mechanism is. Um, but anyway, we've created an, an open MTA that does allow you to redistribute and does allow you to reuse and, and build on commercially. Um, you might say, well, why not have an, M why have just, why have an MTA at all? Let's just get rid of the MTA. But it's actually quite helpful because it does, um, like uh, universities, for example, don't like to distribute materials that they might be held liable for if the materials don't work. So it has a bunch of legal language to kind of cover liability for the researchers and the institution. Um, and that's quite helpful. And it very explicitly in writing says you can redistribute this and you can sell it and use it commercially, which is quite important if anyone kind of asks down the line that you have proof and evidence that you received it under this very permissive um, MTA. Um, so I'm sure this has already been covered, but you know, it was not, it wasn't just the collection that we wanted to provide. It was also a community where you can discuss so if you go to forum.reclaim.org, you can chat about different protocols, stuff that you're doing, um, questions that you have. Um, and there's been some great sharing of protocols already on protocols.io in the reclone.org collection. Um, you can see just a couple here. Um, and we've, for example, in my group worked on this plate protein expression on auto induction media to make it even easier to make some of the proteins in areas and labs where you may not have, for example, large volume centrifuges, um, and you might want to just keep things very simple and quick. So if anyone's keen to try that out, you can you can have a go. And this is work that we did with Maboa Lab for a, where we're expressing on plates, on Petri dishes, and auto-inducing using milk powder, um, which works pretty well. We have DNA polymerase here, as you can see. Um, and there's a video here of just the, the plate being scraped of its biomass. And so this is exactly the sort of protocol that I think the Reclone Network is a great um, venue to, to kind of come up with and test and validate across different labs um, because it really takes away quite a lot of the time and effort in protein expression. Uh, where your protein works with this method, which of course won't be every protein, um, you can get biomass that's scraped immediately off the plate straight into a tube and then you can go and either purify it or not purify it depending on what your downstream application is. Um, and so it comes off really nicely and it saves quite a lot of time. Um, so that's just one example of a kind of uh, collaboration that's built through the um, through a number of participants in Reclone. And yeah, one plate produces thousands of PCR reactions, which is uh, very useful either for your own lab or for your institution, or maybe even considering moving forward to make that available for other people in the region. Um, so there's some examples, and yeah, I hope I know that uh, Yanke and Spelly have also been pushing the fact that this is a kind of community reboot. So we really want to see more people involved in uh, taking this forward and definitely um, join. And if you have any useful protocols or any suggestions that you think this network should work on together or parts we should add to the collection, then definitely just let us know. And I will stop sharing now and take any questions. Looks like we're quite quiet on the front in terms of the chat. So hopefully that means a lot of you well, knew about the collection before, really. I hope so. Yeah, well, I figure most people will be um, 
will have come before. So um, I have one question because I think Felipe's on the line. So I don't, and because we this is recent work, I don't have any slides covering the new um, expression vector. Um, so I wonder, if, Felipe, if you might just give a quick, very quick intro to the new expression vector and where, where we're at with that. Um, Maida did say some words about the new expression vector PTI and how they tested it already. And I do have most of the stuff in the molecular diagnostics toolkit cloned into PTI. I just haven't expressed and tested them yet. Um, it is on the works for, for early next year in January. So hopefully in the next meeting, we'll have some more updates about that. Great, and if anyone would be willing to double test it and have a plasmid in your lab that you try and express and let us know if it works, that would be super helpful. Um, and there's a question from Manuel in the chat. So will the addition of tags like reporter plus tag solubility plus affinity interfere with the enzyme function or does it depend on the enzyme? Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it totally depends on the enzyme and the tag combination. So um, it is quite possible with many enzymes to get three or four tags arrayed. Um, a critical thing with a lot of them is whether it should, they should be at the C or the N terminus if the protein cares or not. Some proteins don't particularly mind tags at both ends. Others are very fussy. So um, we do, for the common enzymes in the collection on the Open Bioeconomy Lab website, we've got some expression guides where we try to kind of gather from the literature where people have previously validated constructs with tags at the N or C terminus for the proteins and kind of what, uh, what combinations had previously been validated just to kind of give people a head start. But I think it does, unless you're copying something directly that, some, that someone's put together before, there's always a risk that uh, it just won't work very well. Um, we don't, what we don't have, I believe, in the reclone collection, but we do, oh, we probably do actually have a couple, but we definitely have in the broader E. coli protein expression toolkit, which is also on 3 d and add gene is linkers. So sometimes um, you can get, like say a reporter to express quite well, but it may need a flexible linker to just give enough distance between it and the enzyme to be able to, for the enzyme to kind of do its thing. Um, a good example of this is we work quite closely with Professor Lisa Hall's lab here at the University of Cambridge, and they've been trying to use silica binding domains to immobilize DNA polymerases onto silica particles and then use those directly in lamp reactions. Um, they tried it, so it works really well with BST and they have a fairly flexible linker. They tried a number of different linkers of different lengths and different rigidities and found kind of a nice combination, but it seems, it seems reasonably robust to quite a number of linkers, just some are best than others. Um, but when they've tried it with tap polymerase, it just doesn't work um, no matter what link they've tried. So there's clearly something going on in terms of how TAC has to kind of confirmationally change while it's um, you know, doing its DNA polymerization compared to BST that makes it much less um, capable of being tethered or immobilized to something like silica where there's not you know, a lot of flex. So yeah, it, it does depend, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. ah, Guy's got a question on the backbone. Yeah, so, um, well, we don't know because we haven't, well, we haven't expressed on the new backbone, but Myra, have you expressed BSTLF on the new backbone and is it working well for you? So I didn't do it, but a person from Fernand's lab did it, which is Javier Aviles, and they, they purified it and it was working well. So yeah, so with the open vector, it's working really good. Even they use it for doing detection for PBY virus from potato. And it was working well. Yeah. That's great. I mean, we haven't done extensive head to head, I think, guy. <laughs> the kind of answer to that one. Um, in terms of the main, have you got the map for what the new map is? Or maybe just post a link to the benching file in the chat and people can have a look. 
But I should say Finan's lab did try a number of different backbones and this was the best performing. So, um, yeah. Um, hi. Yeah. I mean, above the backbone, uh, it really doesn't mean... Oh, great. Mean... You're here. I didn't see you, Isaac. Otherwise, I would have asked you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think um, yeah, about the back one. Yeah. The, uh, the, 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 there is no any special advantage on the expression level. Maybe I think it's similar to the, to the uh, vector that comes with the collection previously because they are all uh, pet, pet, uh, 28 related. Uh, but uh, the, the real advantage is uh, this vector is adapted for the Golden Gate cloning, and that is the, the main change. And also, uh, it is work uh, is working perfectly ar about uh, around the, um, the induction and the repression of the the enzymes. Um, then it has a really a low leak expression and a really nice. Uh, uh, induction expression of the proteins and uh, with the science we, we have been working until now that is uh, BSTLF and MMLB uh, the induction levels are uh, similar but I think the the, the purity of the enzyme is um, a bit better but yeah but they are similar Great, thanks, Isaac. Didn't see you were here. I would have asked the expert if I'd known. <laughs> Great, uh, thank you so much for sharing. And then we have an idea from Felipe that uh, something that might be interesting for us a recon to work in the future on the experimental site is doing an interlab exper experiment to figure out the most reliable ways to express and purify these enzymes locally. Uh, so yeah, it's a nice brainstorming for our future and implement that. Uh, and do we have uh, any other questions? Uh, but we still have uh, five minutes on this call, but before uh, wrapping up, we wanted to open this moment if anyone wants to share uh, any updates, because we know that some of you have been with Recurlon for a while now, uh, others are new faces joining us. Uh, so anyone has uh, anything they would like to share? I mean, if you don't, if you're not prepared to share right now, don't worry. You can always contact us uh, when, wherever you, whenever you want. Um, oh. so hi, I think we'll... hi, Jenny. Oh. So hi. maybe I, I'll, I'll give some updates on Team Philippines. So yeah, as I've said earlier, we are, uh, we have successfully expressed and actually purified three of your proteins from the clone. So uh, it's the RHIVRD, RNA inhibitor, and MMLV. Unfortunately, we have some trouble with like BSLF and V5.9. Yeah, but yeah, I think we will have some talk with uh, in January, right? So yeah, that would be some uh, a good point of discussion <laughs> if I agree. Yeah, th that would be all for me, sir. That's great. Thank you, Aaron, for sharing. I will definitely touch base with you about that in uh, in January. You said yes. Yeah, we're looking forward for that in January. Great. Thanks. Um, so I guess if there's no other questions or comments, uh, we're just going to wrap up. And thank you all again for joining us today. Sorry, it has been a little bit hectic to begin with, but I think we, uh, we got there in the end. Um, we will always welcome any help from anyone who wants to take, take part more about uh, with our future reclaim events. So we'll pop a few, uh, yeah, thank you, Sibeli, uh, for pop our uh, links in the chat for you guys to just get in touch with us to let us know if you want to be involved uh, in any way, shape or form in the future. And uh, also to join us in, uh, we'll let you know about our future events. 
Uh, so the only other event coming up so far is our next meeting. So as I said, we're meeting uh, on the second Wednesday of every month at 2 p.m. GMT. So our next meeting will be on the 11th of January, where Fran Quero will be uh, telling us a bit more about molecular diagnostics. Um, yeah, I think that is everything. Uh, I would like to invite you all to fill out this survey and just let us know, you know what you want to see with Rootland going ahead. Um, and yeah, join our forum and hopefully see you guys in the future. Any last remarks before I close up? Uh, maybe if everyone feels like it, we could open our cameras and take a photo. <laughs> I know it's difficult. I know people will be on their pajamas, but it's always nice to see some smiles and register our reviews. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. It's actually quite nice to be able to see a, see a few friendly faces. Definitely. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to make some time next time to actually do a, a full round of introduction, find out where everyone's coming from um, and a bit more. So uh, thank you guys again for turning up. Thank you, Myra. Thank you, Jenny, for presenting. Yes. And now, OK, I think we have most our cameras open. Uh, Yankee, can you help with the screenshot? Sometimes my computer is not that reliable. Okay, so smile, everyone. Yeah. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you guys, and I uh, hopefully see you again next time. Take care now. Bye. I just see it, realize we can see two sides of Jenny. <laughs> Great. Thank you guys, Susie and Savelli, for helping host. Um, I guess we're going to um, 